All right, I wanted to come on real quick and just talk a little bit about uh, essential oils, plant resins, um, any of those types of remedies, okay, those natural ingredients. I really just, I really don't know where to start because this is like a whole class. Like this would literally take a whole class to talk about safety, patch testing, how to use them safely, sensitization, overuse, uh, different, you know, different things that you have to consider and think about when you're using these as medicine. Now, many, many people can use these with no problems at all, okay? But you are gonna have groups of people that react either right away or react later, which means they become sensitized to it, okay? So there's some people that are gonna have an immediate reaction, and then there's people that are gonna be able to use it initially, and then they end up having a reaction down the road, okay? That's sensitization. They've, they've used it too much. They've, they've overdone it. <laughs> they've overdone it. Whereas if they used it just maybe once or twice and they only did that periodically over the years, they might be fine with it. But using it consistently builds up this uh, intolerance. Okay. So where I'm going with this is there's a lot of products out there, a lot of natural products out there that have a lot of these resins in there. Resins, essential oils, um, and very strong plant extracts. Now, there are plant extracts that are much more gentle. They, they have a much broader range of safety, like plantain, like a salve with plantain in it is gonna be really gentle and the overwhelming majority of people are gonna have no problem with it. Yes, you're always gonna have your outliers, okay? But it doesn't have the volatile oils, it doesn't have any of these really, really strong chemicals, okay? The reason I'm mentioning this is because I talk a lot about the Boudreaux's butt paste, the maximum strength that works so well, but it does contain Peru balsam, a balsam of Peru, okay? Which, is a known sensitizer. It's known to cause irritation in a lot of people, and it's known to cause sensitization over time. And again, I find it interesting that it's in a baby cream, a baby rash diaper cream. Now, people that use it swear by it and say that it works great, but it makes me go, oh my gosh. Now, I recommend it for a lot of skin problems because it works amazing for a lot of people, and I've seen it work amazing for a lot of people. However, I always tell people to be very mindful and notice if you start to get any kind of added irritation to stop using it, okay? And then I recommend the Sensitive Skin one, okay? The Boudreaux's Sensitive Skin Butt Paste. There is no Peru Balsam in there, okay? Then if you wanna add your own plant extracts, the ones that are much more gentle, again, like a plantain or something like that, then you could do that. You could infuse plantain into an oil and then add it into that paste and you can make your own, okay? So, the thing that is really important is that we don't wanna use medicine if we don't need to use medicine, okay? Which is why you will never see me put essential oils or plant extracts into something that doesn't need it. Sunscreen, doesn't need it. Do not put essential oils or any plant resins or any plant extracts in sunscreen, okay? Don't do it. You don't need it. And you don't wanna be out in the sun with these volatile oils and these plant resins and stuff on your skin, okay? It's just not a good idea, okay? Um, I know some people are gonna argue that point, whatever, but as a professional aromatherapist who's been doing this for 30 years, don't do it. Even the most gentle ones, okay, when used over time, all the time, especially in the sun when you're hot and sweating, heaven forbid you get a sunburn, okay, they really can cause problems if it's something that you're using all the time, okay? Now, is lavender good for burns? I love lavender, and I've been known to put a little bit of lavender into like a burn balm or a burn healing salve or something. Yes, I do think that it can be really incredible, but once again, there is a point where it just becomes an irritant 
if the concentration is too high. So the secret is keeping it at a concentration that is low enough to not cause any irritation, but to support healing. Okay, poultices and compresses and things of that nature. Using more gentle herbs, raw honey, those types of things are actually going to be a lot more gentle. Now, is that to say someone can't be allergic to raw honey? Yes, they absolutely can. Okay, anybody can be sensitive and allergic to anything. That is why it is always really important to patch test. And if you notice any irritation at all going on, if you've introduced a new product to your regimen, pay attention. Okay, pay attention. So where I'm going with this is according to my philosophy and my experience and my belief and my knowledge, my experience and education, is that we don't need to be using things that are fragranced with these natural products. And I say fragranced because most of these active substances, essential oils and plant resins and things like that, have a scent, okay? Don't use them unless you need to, okay? I'm currently treating a couple moles right now, whereas I got one on my back, one on the back of my arm, right here that you can see. And I'm using the Boudreaux's butt paste with the balsam of Peru that I've added some essential oils to, but I am using them as spot treatment. And I will alternate with the other one where I will put it onto my chest and my neck area and under my chin, because it's really good for skin, <laughs> helping to tighten and just keep the skin healthy. I've had a lot of sun exposure to my chest over the years, so I'm definitely hoping to keep that area from developing any you know, skin cancers and you know, anything related to sun damage. So I've had a lot of it over the years but I don't use it every day. Okay, don't use it every day. And especially when it comes to your face, you wanna be really, really careful, okay? So when I work with essential oils and CO2s, I work with them in extremely low concentrations. And especially for the face, I'm keeping it below 1%. Usually I'm closer to about 0.05%, 0.5%, I'm sorry, 0.5%, half a percent, okay? Half a percent. Um, and I find that that low, low amount seems to work really, really well, okay? And again, it's not something you need to put on your skin every single day. It's good to maybe alternate, maybe rotate, maybe use uh, the one with the active plant chemicals at night and just oils as a balm during the day. Again, the bandwagon to add these plant chemicals to everything is not smart. It's just not wise. Okay. Yes. You're always going to have those people that say, I use it all the time and I'm fine. And I know people that use them all the time and I'm fine. And I smear them on my skin and I use them for cleaning and I diffuse them and I drink them and I, uh, you know, whatever. And that's fine. But what I can tell you is that people end up in the emergency room from doing these things, from, you know, drinking them, diffusing them, they're volatile oils, okay? They are volatile oils. Essential oils are volatile oils. They have the potential to cause reactions, irritation, inflammation, sensitization, okay? I look at them as medicine. They are medicine, okay? They are medicine. And I do make perfumes with them as well. I, I'm a bit of a perfumer. I've done that for, my gosh, about 20 years now. Um, but again, it's really, really important that we're not using these types of products every single day, okay? You don't wanna be breathing them in all the time. Again, they are volatile oils, okay? You just don't want to be rubbing them onto your skin every day. They do get absorbed into the body. And again, in small amounts, they are medicine, but in large amounts, they become a poison, okay? So we have to remember that. With natural remedies, like you, like, the dose makes the poison or the medicine. The dose makes the medicine, okay? Plants have an awful lot of chemicals in them that can become toxic in large doses, okay? So again, use them mindfully. When they work, they work beautifully. And I've seen them do absolutely incredible things. I've talked about the two spots on my face that looked like uh, this one was absolutely a skin cancer. I am totally convinced of it, even though I did not go to the dermatologist. Um, 
years and years and years ago, I did go into a skincare shop and they had that thing that you look into and the woman who ran the place was there. And she was like, oh, you better go get that looked at. She was an esthetician and she was like, you need to get that looked at. So I knew back then that this was definitely turning into something and it did. It grew, got bigger, was gnarly, didn't look good, had an irregular border, was funky colors. Um, definitely, definitely a skin cancer in my humble opinion, comparing to images on Google. Okay, and what little background I have in skincare, which I do. I do have a little bit of a background in skin health and skin education, I guess. Okay, um, I do have a little bit of training there. So we did learn about pathologies of the skin and things like that and definitely look like a skin cancer. And I had a little, this, this little mark on my forehead is different. I tried to exfoliate a little milia off, which was a mistake. But I had had a patch on my forehead as well that looked like one of those precancerous lesions. Um, and I've healed these, okay, I've healed these. I've healed these with the remedies, okay? And again, I have no doubt that they work and I've helped tons of people heal skin things as well with them. So I do know that they work, but again, they can lead to sensitization. You have to be super careful and super mindful. I could go on and on and on. So I guess I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Okay, signing out.